Now, I'm not done yet, nor is the psalm complete quite yet. I could not rest until I discover that the Lord is my success. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You pause right there and you see success. My cup overflows. But there's something else of success that is portrayed here. You anoint my head with oil. Oil is significant in any day and age. There are different kinds of oil. We realize in our day and age that crude oil that comes out of the ground is made into fuel and every country that is developed needs oil, needs gasoline to run their automobiles, their machinery, and so forth. So we might say that being successful is different than getting crude oil, but there's another kind of oil. Let me explain. God's definition of oil or definition of success is striking oil in your relationship with Him. Striking oil in your relationship with Him. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Now let's just stop and think about that for a few moments. What is the meaning of oil in the Old Testament? They didn't have automobiles or heavy machinery yet. So what kind of oil are they talking about? Well, David is talking about the kind of oil that was very significantly used for sheep. Yes, olive oil that would be poured on the sheep's head and keep the scratches to a minimum in terms of infection, to keep the fleas away. In a multitude of uses, oil, olive oil was the most common kind that was taken, squeezed out of the great old olive trees. But yet another use for oil was very significant, and that was the pouring out of oil on the priests or the kings when they were anointed. And in several cases, you find that one, a head priest, a high priest would come and he would anoint someone to be king, as he did David, and before that, Saul, and then Solomon. And they would take that precious oil and pour it upon the head of the one to become specially anointed and king or priest or prophet. And it represented a relationship with God that was special in that day and age. That this person with the anointing of oil running down their hair and face and off their beard, this particular person had a special relationship with God. They were given wisdom from on high. They were special people to lead God's people. They had struck oil in their relationship with the Almighty. And this was what made them different. Well, in today's day through Jesus Christ, we understand that each one of us has oil. We have the oil of the Holy Spirit. Each of us has that special relationship where we can have it with God Almighty, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon believing in Jesus Christ. So we are to keep this in mind. Have you struck oil in your relationship with God Almighty? Note the various aspects of success. God's definition of success is knowing God. You anoint my head with oil. Knowing you are loved. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And knowing as well where you are going. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's look at these briefly and individually. Success is knowing God. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. We find it in the book of Jeremiah, knowing God is what's worth boasting about. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth, for in these I delight. Boasting is boasting and knowing God. God allows you to be proud of one thing, knowing Him, and that will always keep you humble. Note as well that success is knowing that you are loved. Every person, individual, man, woman, child wants to be loved, accepted by the Almighty God. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. You know that word follow is really the word to pursue, that He pursues you. He won't let you go. Wherever I turn, I find that God is pursuing me. Even if I try to get away from him, like Jonah wanted to get away from God, he couldn't. God was with him and provided for him. 
There have been many that have tried to run from God. The Apostle Paul, before he became Paul, he was Saul. And he's running from God and even persecuting the Lord Jesus. But God would not let him go. He followed him. He pursued him. The love of God will not let you go no matter how far you want to get away from him. He will turn here and there. And finally, you'll turn to him and find that that is success, knowing that I'm loved all the days of my life and I need not love to the, need the, that love from other people to the same extent because he is my love. That's success. And then finally, we note uh, in this, uh, just pausing a moment again to see that God's love is demonstrated in us or for us through the love of uh, his son to us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the ultimate love that we were sinners and he was perfect and he died for us. That is the crooks. That is the foundation of our love. Every day of our lives, we can remember that he died for us while we didn't deserve it. And then note that success is knowing where you are going. Where are you going? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, what house was David talking about? I don't think he was talking about the tabernacle of his day because... It wasn't that big. There wasn't much place to dwell. And much of it was off limits to him even as a king because uh, the priests were allowed through the whole, to the holy place and holy of holies and so forth. And so I don't think it was a tabernacle. David never saw the temple. It was built after him. I believe when he says the house of the Lord forever, it has to be an everlasting one, not on earth, but in heaven. David knew with assurance where he was going when his days on earth were over, when he died. He knew that he would go into the presence of God. And so success is knowing the God, first of all, striking oil in your relationship with him. Success is uh, knowing that you're loved by him. And as you read the word of God, you find again and again his immense love for you that takes you out of your moments of despair. And then success is knowing for sure that you have heaven. You can have all the riches in the world, but you are dirt poor. You are poor if you don't know you're going to heaven because you will die a tramp. You will die unwanted. You'll die in despair unless you know for sure that you're going to heaven. You cannot let this go by chance and hope so. You have to know, and that is the wealth of eternity. Success is knowing where you are going. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, he who believes in me has everlasting life, has heaven. So I ask you, do you have a shepherd? Do you have a shepherd or are you a lost sheep, prone to wander, prone to the attacks of the evil one, Satan, who is called a roaring lion? You cannot rest until you have a shepherd who is your success. And you cannot rest until you have a Shepherd, who is your security and your satisfaction? I say, come to him. Come to him. One at a time, say, Lord Jesus, I make you my satisfaction. Now I make you my security. Now I make you my success. Come to him. Don't delay. Have you made the Lord your shepherd, who is all these things? Security. Success, satisfaction. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. There's one other thing here. And I have assumed that all of us here today and everyone out there who might view this DVD has made the Lord Jesus their Savior. That's a big assumption. Too much of an assumption. There's too much at risk. You must make the Lord Jesus your Savior. He wants to be your Savior. Again, he has said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And again, he said, while on earth, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life 
and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Make him your savior if you haven't done so today. He is your shepherd. He is your Lord. Security, satisfaction, success. I would like to lead you in prayer, and then I'll close by reading the 23rd Psalm. Lord Jesus, you know the people that are viewing this today who have not made you their shepherd who provides security. I pray right now that any number of people would say, Lord, I'm wandering, I'm fearful, I'm afraid. Be my security. Bring your rod upon my life and staff accordingly. Come be my security. And yet others are seeking satisfaction in the world, in people, in positions, in college, in university degrees, in wealth, in jobs, in their youth, in a spouse, and the list goes on. Yet they have not found the satisfaction that lasts. Say in your heart, if this is you, Lord Jesus, I turn to you my satisfaction. I receive you as my shepherd who satisfies my life. And then we're seeking for that elusive word, success, which is really only found for eternity in the shepherd, our Lord Jesus. If this is you looking for success in every place but God, say, Lord Jesus, my shepherd, I make you my security, satisfaction, and success now, finally. Be my success. I want to know daily that I'm loved by you. I want to know daily that you have a place for me in heaven. I want to strike it rich, striking oil in my relationship with you, that I'd be ever close and know that you are present. Come, Lord Jesus, whatever our need. And then for those who have never made him Savior, say, come, Lord Jesus, I, forgive, I ask my, you to forgive my sins. I repent of my sins. I turn from them. Take them away and give me your peace and righteousness. Come as my Savior. And so we read the familiar psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Session over.